I'm Sarah, and it's time for Coffee and Crochet with Sarah and Max. <laughs> well, this last week we did the American flag bandanas <clears throat> that will work for any size dog or pet, and Maximo is kindly modeling that for us today. Isn't he precious? I think he's pretty precious. Well, good morning. I hope everybody had a wonderful week this week. Now, I do want to mention one thing. <clears throat> I got hacked yesterday on Facebook and Instagram. If anybody sends you a message asking for money, it's not me. Report it immediately. <clears throat> I checked. Both pages have been taken down. But just in case it ever happens again, I will never ask you for $2,000. Ever, ever, ever. Okay? Okay. <laughs> That's out of the way. Let's have a great day, okay? So I'm going to set Maximo down. Again, this is our American flag dog bandana, and I'll talk a little more about it later. I'm going to let Max go sit on his poof. There you go, buddy. All righty. Now, before we get started, don't forget we need to clink in. Clinkity, clink, clink, clinky. <laughs> All righty. Now... <clears throat> we had one special visitor. I have two more. <laughs> All right, who are you? I'm Zoe. Wait, one at a time. <laughs> Zoe. I'm Kelly. <laughs> These are my two favorite granddaughters. Of course, they're my only granddaughters. <laughs> of course, you all know Zoe's... I went the wrong way. Zoe's here. She lives here in Colorado with her mommy and daddy. And she's almost nine in September. She'll be nine years old. And then Callie lives in Oklahoma, and she's up visiting this week. So her parents brought her up, and we made them leave. And Callie and her brother, um, I almost said Caden, Aiden, <laughs> um, he didn't want to be in the video today. You know, he's 13. He don't care about this stuff. And he's sleepy. Yeah, and he's sleeping in. <laughs> so it's just us girls today, and that's okay. They have something they want to show you, and then they're going to go play, and we'll get started. All right, let's start with Zoe. Pandemonium! <laughs> that, I want now. <laughs> <laughs> That's her favorite panda. She loves pandas. And it has a baby. It does. <laughs> All right, Callie, tell us what you got. I got the new Ravel Tail Series 2, which now there's smaller ones, and each pack comes with two rattle tails and they have a little little yarn, yarn tattoo on their bottoms yeah. <laughs> and they still come with the little beds but this time they each have like a yarn ball look to them and they're really cute remember last year when callie was here and we talked about the rattle tails um you could buy them at walmart and you got a baby a stuffed baby and you could make a little bed it came with yarn you could crochet necklaces it had charms these have all the same thing the only difference is they're they're smaller and each look at the little tuft of yarn on top of their heads and they're super cute and she got these for her birthday from her other grandma and from her mom and dad and I think they said they got them at Target. Yeah. Now, we looked for them at Walmart. Walmart had the old Ravel Tails, which are super fun, uh, but they didn't have the new ones, and I couldn't find them at Target either. And I looked at Michael's because someone said Michael's had them. They didn't have them either. So keep looking for them. You can also, I did see them on Amazon if you want to buy some for your kiddos. They're super duper fun. All right, girls, thanks for being with me today. Go on and play now, and we'll get some more yarny talk going. <laughs> well, thanks for your patience, every day, uh, everyone. I love my girls. My grand girls is what I call them. And we got lots of things to talk about today. And I want to thank all of you for being here. I love seeing all these names that I recognize. I'm looking through all the comments. And um, I thank you all for your patience with my girls. I just love them to death. And Callie and her brother sometimes, because they're in Oklahoma, would pop in and watch my live videos. They're just, they're just precious, precious. I've been blessed with the three best grandkids in the world. I know you think yours are the best, but mine are. <laughs> All righty. <clears throat> Let's do our shout out. Now, this week, I have a really, really nice lady classy, very knowledgeable in um, yarn and crochet and crafts. And I sort of stumbled upon her 
by accident a couple of months ago. Um, I was, I had, remember I told you about Off the Hook? Well, I was looking for her blog, which I do like her blog as well. But her, this lady is called Jean of On the Hook. And I accidentally went to her blog or her uh, YouTube channel. I really liked it. She's very, very talented. And I think you're really going to like her. Now, I'll post her YouTube channel on Facebook, on our Posh Push Designs Facebook page. And then I'll also link it underneath the video when this shoots over to YouTube, okay? Her name is Jean, and her YouTube channel is On The Hook Crochet. Go check her out. You're really going to like her. All righty. Yes, uh, Rose says, hope you're having a great time with your grandkids. We have had a blast. And we have been sleeping so hard because we're up early in the morning and we go from, you know, morning until 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and just hit that pillow. We've had so much fun. We did a lot of fun things when, her, when their parents were here. What they did is they went to New Mexico for a family vacation. And then they drove on up here to Colorado and we did a bunch of stuff for a week. And then they drove on back home because they have to go back to work. And uh, my, my son-in-law is a police officer in Oklahoma, and my daughter runs a, a company, a, a restaurant called Chicken Express. She's the manager there. If you go to Mustang, Oklahoma, that's where they live. And they left their grandkids, or their kids, my grandkids, up here. Because my Zoe loves Callie, they are, like, inseparable. We've just, just had so much fun. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I could talk all day about my grandkids, okay? All right, so we did our shout-out. And uh, we're going to do a question of the week today, and that's because I got a lot of questions about this, and it has to do, move that out of the way there so I can use my other camera here, it has to do with chains, okay, and so this is the way the question came through, and I've had it before, so I thought I'd go ahead and address it, okay, it says, why does my beginning chain curl, why is it too tight, and why is it too loose? And how come I can't do, you just use a foundation double crochet instead of a chain with a row of double crochets? And I'm going to talk, I'm going to answer those questions for you because it does make a difference what the project is, how you start it, okay? So let me click over to the top cam real quick. And I've got some examples here. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about, I'm going to move this one out of the way because that's the foundation double crochet. Okay, so let's talk about this. I'm working on a project. I have the right number of chains, but it's curling. Why is that happening? Okay, so here's one that's not curling. How can I get it to lay like this? All right, so the reason that your chain is curling is because you chain too tight. Well, your project says use an H hook, which is a five millimeter. And so what you need to do, I'm gonna grab another little bit of yarn here what you need to do, just grab this gold, is instead of using the H hook for the chain, go up a hook size and use an I just for your chain because then your chain is just a little bit loose. And I try to remind people on my videos as well as on my patterns that if you're chaining a long chain or a short chain, you're better off chaining just a little bit loose. Loosen up your gauge, loosen up your tension, or go up a half size. Here's a five millimeter, your eye is a 5.5. And it's true of the opposite. If you're chaining and your chain is all looped out, and let me just show you with this, let's just say, that's the wrong one, here we go. Let's just say your chain is nice and full, but your stitches are pulling in. And what that means is that your chain is too loose, okay? And so, again, if your pattern calls for an eye hook and your chain's too loose, you can go down a hook size, okay? And that's just for the chain, not the whole project, just the beginning chain. If it's too tight, go up a half size to your next hook. If it's too loose, go down a half size to your next hook, whatever the pattern is recommending that you use. And it's really important because if you're making something that maybe you're going to put the ends together, your one end's going to not fit if it's too tight or too loose. And also making a blanket or something, 
anything, you don't want that edge, you know, to be wobbly or too curly. All right. It's nothing that you're doing wrong. And that's what this, this particular lady was asking me. What am I doing wrong? It's nothing that you're doing wrong. Everybody has a different level of tension or gauge. Okay. So you just learn to adjust. I tend to crochet tighter. I always say, I, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. I tend to crochet looser, but when I knit, I tend to knit tighter. I don't know why. So I adjust. Um, if you're making, for instance, we're going we're gonna to be talking about the squares that we made yesterday. If your square's too small, by say half an inch, you can always wet block it or go up a hook size. If it's coming out too big, you can wet block it again to kind of scrunch it in, or you can just go down a half size on your crochet hook. Don't panic. You're not doing anything wrong. You just have to learn how you crochet. All right, the other question was, can I just use the foundation double crochet? And you can, <clears throat> but it did, hang on, two seconds. There we go. <clears throat> Got a little dry. You can. But if the pattern is something, say, a waistband that needs to have a fit, then this is going to be too stretchy. Okay, that's one thing to keep in mind. You can always substitute a foundation double crochet for a chain and then a row of double crochets, or a foundation half double crochet for a chain and a row of half double crochets, and even foundation single crochet instead of the row of chain and single crochet. Just keep in mind, sometimes the designer doesn't want the pattern to be stretchy. This to me is perfect for, um, you know, things like say a cowl or the edge of a hat that you want to be a little bit stretchy. But if you're going to use this <clears throat> on something, like I said, like a waistband or maybe the collar, you don't want it to stretch out, then you want, might want to do what the pattern suggests. And if you can't see a reason, for instance, it's just a preference, you can always try it for a few stitches, see if it's going to work, and then go one way or the other. All right? And, and the bottom line of this is you're not doing anything wrong. And a lot of times, you know, designers do things a certain way. And a lot of times what I do is I try to do things that I think is going to make it the easiest way to do it to work for that pattern. I, I love using the foundation double crochet. I really do. But there's some instances where it's going to be too stretchy. So keep that in mind when you're trying to decide whether to use the uh, foundation double crochet, half double crochet, or single crochet, um, opposed to chaining and then doing it. I, there's some blankets that I do that I really like to use the foundation double crochet because I'm going to put a trim on and that trim's going to help it hold its shape. Okay, but there are times that I don't uh, have some that I'm not going to put that, that big thick trim on and so I'll use the regular. And so that's kind of up to you and where you're at in your crochet journey, what you feel comfortable doing, okay? But again, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just preference. Okay, and when it comes to chaining your chain too tight or too loose, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just your way. And so you need to find a way that's going to work for how you crochet. It frustrates me a little bit when I hear people say, well, this is the proper way to hold a hook, or this is the proper way to do this. There's no proper way. <laughs> crochet, as I always say, is an ever-changing art, and we have to do it our own way. That's like telling a painter they can't paint their portraits or their landscapes the way they're used to painting. It's art. You have to do what works best for you. Okay, so keep that in mind when people tell you, oh, you don't need to do it that way or you need to do it this way. Sure, a double crochet is still a double crochet, but if you want to place it in a different spot, that's totally up to you. <laughs> so I like to keep it open. I like to, to let people use their own creative juices and just have fun with a pattern. Okay, now I had a question about some yarn, and so I grabbed some of it here that I have. And I love this yarn. It's really fun to work with. And this is the, the Yarn B Scrubology Scrub It. This one's orange. And I had made some flowers that are scrubbies, but I decided because they were so bright 
that I wanted to uh, hang them in my garden. And if you watched my video on a walk through my garden, um, let me click that off. If I, uh, when I walked through my garden, you can see that I had some flowers up there. And people were like, you shouldn't put those in your garden. Well, this yarn is perfect for the garden. If you have some left over and you want to tie up your tomatoes or your peppers or something, you can. This yarn is 100% nylon. And I love it. I'm working on some baskets and some other things with this yarn. Because although it's scrubology, there's lots of other things you can do with it. And um, if you go in when they have their 30% off, that makes them three bucks a piece. And so what I do is when I when it's on sale, I'll go in and I'll buy several colors. And um, <laughs> when I go to my Hobby Lobby, the lady, the lady there, she calls me the crazy yarn lady. And I saw a meme the other day and it said, you call me crazy yarn lady like you think it's an insult. <laughs> I'm proud. <laughs> I love yarn and I love finding yarns that are different and also I love using yarns in different ways. This yarn is meant to be gotten soppy and wet. Now as far as in the sun, yes, it might oxidize in the sun. But if those flowers only last this year, that's okay with me. It brightened up my garden. I'm getting lots of bees and lots of good results. So I don't care, you know. I'll make them and I'll do it every year if I have to because I love them and I love this particular yarn. So this is the Yarn B. It's a bulky number five. This is just two colors here. It's a bulky number five and you can make lots of wonderful things for your garden. And if you have it left over, use it to tie stuff up. Don't waste your yarn. And another thing, hook all these colors together or make fun flowers and all kinds of things. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Watch the Fun Friday video a couple weeks ago when we did a walk through my container garden. And, a, and we're also going to be, I'm going to try to do another one probably the second or third week of July because I want you to see how wonderful my garden is working and growing, okay? And it's a great way to garden in containers because I, I used to have great big gardens. We used to do great big um, um like uh, corn and watermelons and cantaloupes and I always did a bunch of green beans and did a lot of canning and stuff but I grow enough in my small container garden on my patio or my deck to do I did um, pickles uh, canned pickles last year I had tons of uh, zucchini bread yellow cook crookneck squash I mean we had so much fun and I love growing enough to give away okay that's all I'm talking about about the garden okay <laughs> All righty. Now, let's talk about the other things we did this week. We did the American flag bandana for dogs and cats and any size animal. And it's really simple to adjust. You can do more or less red stripes. And then when you go to the blue, you can do more or less blue stripes. And then we added that fun edge to kind of resemble the gold trim on the American flag. Now, a lady contacted me. She, had, she said, I really like it because it is used with the Chunky 5 yarn. It whips up quick, but it's not heavy. She said, but I'm not American. I want to make my own flag. I said, go for it. It's just stripes. You know, you can, you can change it to however colors that you want to. And you don't even have to make it in American flag colors. Make it in your favorite school colors. Take your dog with you when you're out on the games. Because a lot of people do around here. A lot of the softball games, baseball games, football games, people take their, their dogs with them. Get your school colors that you're watching for your kids and make a bandana for your dog <laughs> or your cat. My neighbor will do it for her donkeys. Uh, not donkeys. <laughs> her goats. She doesn't have donkeys. Not yet. <laughs> I love her goats. They come over into our backyard because, you know, we have that big uh, field behind our house, five acres. And they come over and just eat and they play. And I love watching them. They're super fun. Okay, so that's one thing that we did. Yesterday, we did the um, Cluster Flower Granny Square. And here's the three that I made in three different colors. This is the one that I'm going to be using as far as colors for step two. But I love this one. It turned out really pretty. And then this one in pinks and oranges and reds. I like that too. And so what we did yesterday, we did the Cluster Flower um, Granny Square. Then... Tomorrow, we're going, I'm going to show you how to uh, stitch them together into a really interesting shape for a, a scarf. And then we'll add a little trim on it. And then we're going to add a little tassel on 
people hate it when I say tassel, tassel on the front. I don't know why my grandmother, <clears throat> she was very proper and she always said tassel. <laughs> so anyway, a tassel or a tassel <laughs> to add to our scarf. It's going to be super cute. I think you're going to like it a lot. But this is a really pretty, simple cluster flower. I think, is that backwards? There we go. Um, granny square. You can make lots of different things with it. You can make a bag, scarf, hat, blanket, lapgan. And I think it would be a great way to use up a lot of your scrap yarns and make a really pretty blanket or anything. You know, I like to mix my squares around you know in different ways so now the thing we did on friday this week was the chapstick cases super fun i think you really like those um really easy you can use any hooks any keychains any charms any buttons and any yarn and they're super cute we put a little button with a little loop and you just put your chapstick down inside. And you can hook it on your backpack. And you can also stash a little bit of cash in there. And it's big enough for your driver's license as well. You can stick that in there as well. So they're super duper cute. And we did this last Friday on our Friday fun day. And you can customize it however you want. Like I said, you can use any clips, any keychain, any charms, any buttons, and any yarn. All right, now, this Friday we're doing something different and I'm really excited about this Friday's fun day thing. All right, so let me get these things over here and show you what we're gonna need. So, you're going to need, these are called square coke, <laughs> square cork. <laughs> Posters. All right, this pack comes with eight. No, it's a six pack. I usually make four. It's a six pack. Okay, and they're, let's see, they have a size four inch by four inch, and they're 0.125 inch inches, so they're real thin. All right, now I bought these at Hobby Lobby. You can see they were $3.49. I have seen these at Walmart. I've seen these at Michael's, Joann's, and so there was somewhere else I saw them besides Hobby Lobby, but you can find these just about anywhere. If you go to the craft department, there's usually like leather crafting stuff, and then there'll be some cork stuff, okay? Because there's stuff there to make like cork boards and things, and then there's also these. There's square ones, and there's round ones. We're going to be using the square ones on Friday, okay? And then you're going to need a hole punch. This is just your typical little hole punch. I bought this at Walmart about 20 years ago. <laughs> Probably longer than that. It was back when I, I know y'all don't know this about me, but I used to be a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> and I think that this is probably 30 years old. Just your basic hole punch. And we're going to use this to punch the holes. And then we're going to crochet around them. It's super fun. And it's a really simple, fun project. The yarn that I'm going to use is the Sprouts. You can use any cotton yarn that you want to. The sprout, cotton sprout, is a number three. And I think that with what we're doing, a number three cotton works the best, or maybe some of the thinner number four cottons, okay? So keep that in mind when you're picking a yarn. But you can use any yarns from your uh, yarn stash that you just want to use up. I do think, though, um, cotton yarn works best for this project. All right, so that's what you're going to need for Friday. Now, <clears throat> It's a few supplies, it's not much, but the whole theme of what we're doing on for Friday Fun is doing something different, not just crocheting a pattern, and just having some fun with it. And so we're gonna, you're gonna have to use your creative juices just a little bit and have some fun, okay? So if you've already got a hole punch and you've already got some yarn, all you need to pick up, uh, we're gonna need a crochet hook, of course. We're gonna be using an H hook, but a 5.00 millimeter. But all you're going to have to do is purchase some of these. And like I said, $3.49 for a pack of six. I, uh, I like the square ones. I got some round ones too. But for this particular project, I really like the square ones. Okay. All right. That's square cork coasters. <laughs> 
All right. So we talked about a lot of things today. We had a lot of yarny fun. Thank you all for being here. And, uh, and thank you for your patience with my silly grand girls. They're the best. They make me laugh all the time. And they laugh at me all the time, too. I'm always saying, I like mixing up words. I think that's so funny. <laughs> it kind of is until you accidentally use a curse word that you didn't mean to use. <laughs> all righty. So, don't worry if your chains are too tight or too loose. There are ways to adjust it, like I said. And use your creative juices be you, crochet what works best for you. And thank you all so much for being with me today. I'll see you next week. Have a marvelous week because it's summer.